So I know it may not be the prettiest, the most glorious or photogenic, um, and you may be thinking, you've spent time detailing a pickup truck? But how good does this 15-year-old L200 Warrior Mitsubishi look after three and a half days of detailing treatment? That white details. Customer, the L200 is now heading back two and a half hours on the road home. Now I have a deep ultra red pearl mat, something like that. SV Autobiography new car prep. Found myself in trouble with this one when we booked the inquiry six months ago. Actually, it came through in January. It's July now. It was. New car prep, matte paint, great. So we've got matte paint protection, we've got the wheels, we've got the calipers, the full interior, glass. Let's just do a new car prep and discount the polishing. Can't polish the matte paintwork. Silly Jim forgot about the light lenses and all the gloss black roof sets and the gloss black mirrors, the gloss black B pillars, the D pillars at the back there, the grill on the front end, the side grills down the, everything's, everything's covered in buffer trails. It's getting worse, this industry, or new car condition. Ah, uh, anyway, so the polishing's complete. I've had to find the best part of three quarters of a day additional for this polishing to be completed in this week's booking. Today is now Saturday. So the interior is complete. It just leaves now application of, yes, Kamikaze is a pancoat. I didn't know this could go on matte paint, but Kai has reached out and said, go for it. To be honest, this is my first, this will be my first time coating a matte paint car. So what we're doing now, in readiness for the coating, using a mixture of GR Prep and Kamikaze Collections Water Spot Remover to prepare the surface ready for coatings. See if you can work out which panel has been uh, coated with a pan coat. Is there much difference? There actually is. It's a much darker, nicer satin, the door. Um, Kai's instructions were work small, work fast. That's enhanced the colour nicely. You can't 
actually, when the car was wet being washed, it's very metallic. You can almost about to see it there, but now you do actually get more of the metallic. Top right in the frame, it highlights the depth more. It is fiddly. You do have to have your wings done, doors done, lower side struts are done. Uh, you have to have your sort of wits about you with the buffing. Working small for me has meant that the wing was done as one, the lower trim panel, the lower kick bit, the lower paint here has been done as one. I did the top of the door as one. So one, two, three, four. The door's been done in four. That door will be done in three. I've done this bit already. So one, buff, two, buff, three, buff. The rear wing perhaps might be a one. -er. But if the rest of the car comes out like this, um, I'll be pleased. Can you see from there? Yes. And as opposed to using the standard block and sway of the applicator, which is a bit more of a timely precise, I've actually opted for a microfiber pad. Pipette the products directly onto the microfiber pad. These are very handy for coatings. Um, pick them up from the rank company. Disposable, of course, you won't want to use it again. Plenty of products. Give it a squish, give it a blow, nice slow straight lines. Pretty patchy in a minute, but uh, feathers out with the second buff. And when this half of the door is applied, it will all come as one. Pretty amazing actually. Wing, door, door, next. I'm gonna do all the matte areas and then change the setup slightly to do the gloss, pillars, the roof, the mirror. Pretty dazzling to be honest. Still at the roof. Thought I'd finished. Oh.
I don't know why I've bothered setting the lights up for the after footage of the Vogue. Because it's not as though we're looking for paint defects or swirly wellies, but here is the after footage of the autobiography. Boop, 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 boop. bummed up. Today, Monday, it's a new week and we have a new car. <sighs> Say new car, new car for us. It's a 2012 Continental GT Speed Bentley in Onyx Black. Range Rover is being picked up in the next hopefully 5-10 minutes. We were told late morning so late morning. Pretty much good for that now. So the Bentley, this is gonna pad out for the rest of this variety vlog. Um, it's here for three days, working to pretty small budget, really. Now, straight away on top of the wing, there's a really, really fine cluster. A real fine pattern of sender marks visible. Actually seen better underneath the spotlights as opposed to the, see how hazy it is? More apparent this side. This is the offside front wing. Uh, so if it's factory, if it's body shop, unsure at this time, I haven't yet done any paint measurements to work out what's what. What we do know, what we do know is underneath the bonnet in this top corner, that top corner, when it's up there's overspray, lacquer overspray, and here underneath the front sensor there is a drip in the paint, the lacquer, so something somewhere has had paint work with the odd deeper mark blemish. Overall it's not bad. But there's the odd deep mark thrown into the mix into the wheel arch there. Low down on the offside, uh, this is apparent on the sill at the front end down there as well. I've got some, uh, I don't know, it's overspray, it's messy, I know that much. Here, look, it's pretty rough. That's gonna need to be cut away with a dirty pad before we start. We're finding that. High up in the middle of the roof, buffer trailing. And as we get tight to the window trim, nice little pigtails present down in the very bottom channel. So, so rather than us finish this edge, which we normally would with a three inch, we're gonna need to introduce the one inch hybrid to really get tight into there. Because they stand out like a sore thumb. Back onto the bonnet, these Sanding marks, the sanding disc is really, really fine. I haven't seen anything like that before. There's some bad rub marks here where something looks like it's been rubbed at. And then smack in the middle of the bonnet, right there, as a nasty, nasty, nasty bird bomb. That looks deep. How long that's been there for, I'm sure. So we're all taped up. We're going to get the machines out and form a minor major correction somewhere in between the two. Doof music.
Alright, let's have a look. These are really scratched up and to be honest, very resilient as well. See, it's still not perfect. That's taken three cuts to get to that. Uh, I know it's only sort of a minor paint correction job, uh, but I'm, I'm not happy with that now. You're not going to see the rest of the marks in daylight, but it had to have more than one, it had to have more than two, because there really were quite heavy markings on there. So I've worked the wing, the mirror, driver's door, still got the sides to to do. That paint issue on the top surface there, that's come off okay. Still got the side skirt. Moving on to the side skirt now. And I don't know if you've seen this draw before, but... Nice pad. In here we keep a supply of old, sort of dead, dirty, still a tiny bit of life left in, but otherwise no good to be using on the main panel. But we'll reach for these when we get to areas like this. So you can see how much paint's been lifted off on the cut and pass on the sill. Uh, the exercise is that I've hit this back portion twice, but I'm not happy with the level of correction. But obviously a pad, obviously a pad like that, it offers less cut. So we're gonna treat this as a, a couple of cuts just to do a clean pass. Then I'll attach the nice pad again and then offer another cut, which offers more cuts because it's a nicer pad to the then clean paintwork. I don't want to contaminate the nice pad with all this dirty, cruddy paint. If you're wondering about the little small piece of tape that's amiss, I'll pull it in closer so you can see. Although it's a 2012 car and it's a Bentley, there are areas where there is corrosion. You imagine pulling the tape over there to protect that whilst we polish this. Tape comes off and it will pull, potentially pull, a big blister of loose paint off that. So that's an area to be avoided. Always worth checking for that. One here also. Thankfully there's no tape needed there, you can actually do that by opening the door and polishing it away from the sill, so it's separate. Bit of hand polishing required on the upper edge to get into that lip. Uh, we'll do the same with the door open, inside the door shut I'm sure later. But otherwise, that's the paint removed. Now we'll switch pads to a nice pad to offer more of a cut cut. And then take out some more of the defects. That's a nice circle of polish you've got there, sir. No, there we go. <laughs> After a third and final, maybe even a fourth cut, that is a side strip. At an acceptable level. However, I have just spotted. There is, yeah, whatever. material on the bumper for the front end, so Terry for the last 10 minutes. On the wheels, uh, rear bumper, there's a few bits going on. So pretty much the whole car now ties in 90%. Much more than we uh, originally set out to. Yes. How's up? More fallers. Yeah. And the next 
couple of days, in the next five minutes on this episode, we do have some special guests turning up. So stay tuned for more on that. So it's been the multi stage machine polished, all the root beds, the gear, the Lake Country Microfiber pad, Menzerna 400 on the compound, minimum two hits per panel, sometimes three, sometimes four, maybe five hits. Alexa. Before the machines get put away and the engine bay is dressed, and we have a cup of tea. The gloss sensor caps will benefit from a polish before they go back in, so that could be my job. Five minutes, bit of this. Oh, that's nice. Barely even needs refining. That's really sharp. It will be refined and it will be coated before it goes back into the wheel. Uno, Trace. Say one to five in Japanese. What? Say one to five in Japanese. Ichini Sanshi Go Roku. They got it quite quick actually. Yeah, that's crazy. Mine wouldn't do that. Use the same. Oh, that's very close. Delivering from Pristine Detail. Thank you, Graham. Graham supplies the one inch microfiber cutting pads. A lot of people asked about these, uh, so I occasionally drop them into the videos. One inch cutting pads with the hybrid, lots of industry exceptions in the Bentley that we use these on. Discount code JWDP will get you 10% off. Whilst we're at it then, update on the Bentley's progress. The refinement is complete. Real sharp now, it's refined. Beautiful. Just doing some work on the calipers and the arches. Next up will be the exhausts. Left some of the tape on the exhaust area to protect the plastic whilst the metal work is being polished. All this plastic trim is gonna need the polish taken off. That's all body shop related mess. Polishing the calipers with Minzona 400. And I think next up for me is going to be the tooth pickery. So inside all the corners, the angles, the crevices, in and around the reversing sensors, underneath the trim, around the handle, a couple of wooden skewers and toothpicks, broglers, and a microfiber towel. It's not looking too bad though. Cleaning up areas like this in the front bumper. from the ride company. Hey, what's happening? All right guys, hello and welcome to Thursday. So we said about special guests this week. We're joined by the ride company. The ride company are in the UK, um, based in Idaho, boys in America, Boise. 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 Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's waxed up this week. We spoke about that already. I myself will be on stage on Sunday, which I'm not too sure how I'm feeling about that, to be honest, so far. Sorry, right, we'll be on stage <laughs> um, too. So you can do it. You've got a busy week. You've got some busy travels yeah. leading up to Waxstock and days after. We're doing almost the entire tour circumnavigation of 
the uh, the continent. Con yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're seeing it all. Out. All the English countryside. So yeah, it's gonna be good. Nice. Nice. Well, we're, we're here today. We've already done some sort of behind the scenes stuff for the Rag Company channel. Their information, you know about them already by now. We've seen the towels in use, the white details, uh, for a couple of years. But their information is down below for their channel and their videos. But whilst we have the guys, we've got a, a short time to go before the train arrives now. But we're just going to cover some questions, some hot topics that I want to ask myself and I've asked the audience, you guys on Instagram, to tell us. I've been using your towels. When did we first get in touch? Two and a half? Yeah, it was about almost two, two and, three and a half, years. almost three years ago. Yeah. For me, they've been a big game changer. Certainly the introduction to the E365. It's a hot, it's a workhorse towel. It is, That's yeah. my residue removal towel. You see it in the polishing stages all the time. Do you guys have a favorite towel that's uh, up there? The, the <laughs> funniest thing is that the E365 is my favorite towel, oh, really? and it's Anthony's yeah. favorite towel. Okay, but so it's, it's also our most like basic, towel we carry. We make over 150 different types of microfiber. A lot of people are always like, oh, do you love the Eagle? Is it, yeah. is, do you love the Pluffle? Do you love the Dry Me River? Do you love the Twistress? For my money, the E365 is like my favorite because of the durability, because of the longevity, because of the fact that it's 70-30, so even on the softest clear coats, it's mm -hmm. not gonna mar. Yeah. And it's just a hardy, strong towel. Like the 365, just like you're just like you're saying, is is one towel. Like if you had to use one towel to do everything, that is the one towel that you could do to do everything. Because like if you start changing up like the weave and you know, for example, getting to like more of like the Eagle Edgeless weave, where it's more of like a shag, you know, like a shag carpet, very plush, yeah, plush yeah. feel. You couldn't use that to wipe down cloth seats. I mean, you could, but it would it would lend, it would grab, it wouldn't yeah, wouldn't sure. quite perform the same. Or, or yeah, you can't same use it on same that. thing. Whereas like with the weave of the 365, you can use that on virtually everything on the car. You can even use it for glass cleaning. You know, worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't recommend it. Recommend it, but no. you can. We say we make yeah. glass weaves specifically. You must find individual people have their own specific. I use it for this. Okay, well that's great. If it mm -hmm. works for you, everyone can tailor it to their own sort of application. Yeah, so well, towels is, we, is a guide, roughly, I guess. We give them you, our recommendation and they say, hey, this is what we would do because you know, as being detailers, we know what we like and what we like the feel of when it comes to using them. But at the end of the day, the reason why we have so many colors, so many different styles of weaves and things like that is because of uh, customer interaction and the feedback that we've gotten, right? And it's people saying, right hey, I love this towel, could you make it in this color? And we say, well, there's one request, let's see if we get more requests. Yeah. Then two requests, three requests, 50 requests come in for a different color, and we're like, you know what, Like, it seems like you know another color would be necessary for people that are using this towel. But ultimately, at the end of the day, they're still towels. Use them as you will, and we can give you our recommendation, but it's up to you with saying, I like it for this purpose, and if you're getting results and you and it's working for you, don't change it just because we no. say you can't use this towel right. for this. No. You do it what's working best for you. Well, and that's and we always try to give options. So I'll give people two, three different options of each type of towel and say this works. You know, kind of a good, better, best. Yeah. And yeah. my recommendation is usually always the the either the better or best. But I can't stop someone from yeah, going, good. you know, I'm just looking no. to save some money. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. We'll give you a quality towel and a quality price and a quality product. Sure. And so um, you know, that it at the end of the day it's personal preference. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well it leads us nicely on to another one of the popular questions that's coming in. It's one of mine I want to ask. Uh, people always ask about maintenance and how to look after and care for your towels. Uh, yeah. Is there a, a general rule that we okay, I have my routine now and perhaps it's the same as what you're about to tell me. But is there a guideline? The, we kind of call it it's a cold, free and clear, cold. And so it's cold wash, so yeah. cold water. Then uh, free and clear detergent, liquid detergent. Non bio. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so no no fragrance, no colors, no fabric fragrance, softeners. no fabric softener. <coughs> Very simple, clean uh, uh, liquid detergent. It doesn't need to be microfiber specific. Just any general purpose yeah. laundry. Um, but as long as uh, one of the little things we do that I don't know if is available uh, here in the UK, but uh, distilled white vinegar. Yes, I'm so seeing yeah. Half a cup of distilled white vinegar, so about four ounces, uh, put in the uh, fabric softener port or bleach port on yeah. a washing machine. That has enough acidity in it that it will help break up the sealants, the uh, sprayables, things that people put on when they're using like quick detail sprays or spray sealants or drying mm -hmm. towels. Uh, with a drying aid because it'll help break down the rest of um, that product. And then drying, 
hold dry. Whether it's hang, whether it's low tumble, um, basically microfiber is plastic. Yeah. And it melts yeah. at 140 degrees. And so if you exceed that, you're gonna you ruin your towels. towels. Yeah. 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 So what was your uh, cold? What was your so method? The cold, yeah. free and clear. Free and clear. Four ounces of uh, distilled white vinegar in cold, the bleach. Free, clear and cold. And then cold dry. Cool. Yeah. Uh, moving on to some of your questions, we've got one from Howard Tantra. Best drying towel. So the red company have maybe four, different five. Yeah, we towels. do. Uh, we just what did a. Say, is there a best? Well, we just did a video on our channel uh, where Anthony thought that he could dry a large Ford Raptor, a big F-150 Raptor, with uh, yeah. with one twist and shout towel, which yeah. you did. I did. And then I walked up uh, kind of uh, in the old uh, dueling days. Uh, I walked up with a twistress. Yeah. And said, do it again and got the truck all wet again for him and then handed him that towel and said, and he didn't believe me, but you did it. Dry the whole I, I, truck I believe you, I didn't, I didn't want to have to dry the truck again. I already dried the truck once and I was like, okay, I'm sweating. And yeah, you're, you're, you were showing off and uh, I had to bring you back down a notch. So okay, just to well, prove a point. I, did, I dried the truck off again and it worked out uh, just fine. But that, you know, a lot of people when they think best, right, they always say, what's your best drying towel, right? It's best for your situation, it's best for what yeah. you're looking for. And so, you know, when people, you know, they, they say, what's your most absorbent, right? That's when I would say twist and shout, double twist wrist, all day long, our most absorbent towels. Yeah. But when they say best, they, and then I look at, you know, sometimes I'll go on their profile if they're doing customer service and they say, what's the best towel for, for my car for drying? And I go on their car, you know, I see their car and they have a, uh, a black Honda S2000, right? With really soft paint. And I say, okay, if that's really soft, I would go with the Pluffle. The Pluffle would be the softest drying towel, probably arguably yep. the safest. And so, uh, and then they try it and they love it and they fall in love with it. So or, it's different for your application. Yeah, or we have a guy that has a uh, production uh, detail shop where yeah. he's doing a ton of cars. Yeah. He's pushing a lot of cars through and he's just looking for an efficient drying method that isn't going to do a lot of damage, but he doesn't need it to be, you know, the, perfect. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they're going to be doing work on the cars. Yeah. And so in that sense, that, then we can go like, well, a 26 by 59 uh, Dry Me River, yeah. you can drive almost four it's cars with that one. Yeah. And Jeez. if you've got four cars lined up that you're watching, yeah, you send, just, send the guy down with one of those, you know. If this is starting the just last one with dry towel, if this is starting the new week and you've just washed the car, decontaminated the car, and it's now time to dry, you reach your towel. Do you pre dampen the towel as daft as it sounds? Because yeah. you, you sort of pre wet it. Yeah, the well, water, water always finds the path of least resistance. Yeah. So if you wet the towel, it almost instantly, it like basically supercharges it. It's yeah. supercharged, but it basically tells the rest of the water on the vehicle, like, hey, we're all supposed to go. This here. is where we're going now. Yeah. yeah. And the it party's in the towel. The party's in the towel. <laughs> so I recommend to customers that they, I've just got two or three spritz bottles of water over there. So yeah. before we grab a towel, we'll grab it, pre soak it with a spritz bottle, perhaps to the glass to then. Yeah, yep. the rest yep. of the towel, then go to the paint. Yeah, that's what they I absorb always... more, the better. It's like an example is in uh, taking a, a human towel out of the air and cup it. It's going to be a bit stale and brittle to the skin if you give it some of that. But if you wet it and dump it, then actually it performs better yep. the longer it goes. Obviously. Exactly. Yep. And that's that's what a lot of people don't realize. Uh, and the same goes with uh, um, drying it. We put a little bit of the drying aid too on the towel okay. as well. Um, when you're doing maintenance Those washes tips. and things. Uh, that way you've got some lubrication on the surface of the towel and the paint to be doing, uh, to be doing that, yeah. but it, it'll do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Justin Manuel, do you ship to the Philippines? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> For general reference, what it, most people will do is um, on our website, right? Everything, all of our shipping is calculated on there. So when people ask from you know other countries and they say, do you ship here? That, um, think of that, like, that website is a tool and it's gonna generate a quote for you if that's even possible. General rule of thumb is if the country's on the list and it generates a quote and it says that you can complete the order, we can ship to you, absolutely. Um, it's, it's when if you don't see your country on the list, shoot us an email, we can see what we can do. You know, I, I think there's certain situations yeah. that we, we ship We ship all over the world. Yeah. Uh, it's not a, usually not a problem. Um, but again, just go to the ragcompany.com, check out the, uh, you know, make an order, see what happens. It yeah. may actually totally work and we can get it to you. And yeah. if it doesn't, email us. Yeah. That leads again nicely to uh, Luke on Instagram says, uh, why aren't there more products on Amazon? You get the full range of Rag Company on Amazon. So we are working on that. The, the biggest thing with Amazon is we do packs. Uh, okay. So yeah. we, do, we don't do individual towels on Amazon, we do packs. And so a lot of it is trying to build uh, the proper pack of towels. So 
a three pack, a five pack, a 10 pack, or you know, uh, of different items. Yeah. Um, and some do sell more than others. We have had certain towels on that people just didn't buy. So we pulled them off. Uh, whereas other ones, we sell a lot of them. So sometimes it's feeding the beast. And so, yeah. although we would like to put everything on there, our shipping process on our website is amazing. And uh, you can just go on our website, pick it up, uh, and you actually, on our new website currently, you can have the option to purchase straight on Amazon if you'd like, or uh, just buy it right there on our website and we can get it to you very quickly. And <laughs> that's what you say. Uh, Tony, best cloth for everything ever. Uh, that's pretty much covered the E365 degree, yep, yeah, and that's 365. all for this. Yep. Uh, last one I've got is from Dan, which you've pretty much covered. It was, uh, can you ask them to design a microfiber detailing pack that they haven't done already? So, a pack that includes every microfiber you would need for the full white detail. Oh, so a variety of mixture Specific to the white detail. Well, maybe we could talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, do have, we do have kits yeah, available. Yeah. We have uh, a silver, uh, a gold and a platinum kit uh, with all the different types of towels that we recommend. All our favorites, so you can pick any of those up uh, on the Rag Company website. But as to a specific white details kit, we don't have that yet. Uh, but uh, we're always open to those suggestions yeah, and favorites. things like that. So Jim should just, you should just list out your favorites and say, this is what I like, this is what mm -hmm. I use it for. Easy. And there you go, because again, guys, it's all personal preference. And if you kind of, if you've already followed a lot of like Jim's routines and what he does, right, and his methods, then it's kind of direct plug and play. So if he's using, I like this towel for uh, prep, or I like this towel for, you know, interiors, whatever it is, you could follow that suit. Whatever, whatever, whatever you want to do. It's End of the day, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing for me is to uh, walk around the vent with a blower to eliminate any loose stuff on the car. I will reach for two Rag Company Spectrum towels, two towels with Gion Prep to prep the vehicle surface with the coating. So that's pretty much me. Uh, but guys, if there's anything else you want to add, uh, the thanks to you a lot too. It did. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for uh, providing a uh, great morning with us. As well, the boss. Yeah, found well, the boss, mate. I found that one. And I yeah. figured I'd you can't that. just claim that you're the boss. That doesn't work like I that. I am. I don't know if you knew this. Okay, that, that's pretty much all we got, guys. But it's been awesome. Thanks for having us, Jim. You're yeah. Welcome. Great stuff. We'll see you on Sunday. That's going to yep. be fun. I can't wait. Nice. Cool. Again, so trim. We've seen this already, it's covered in polish. Mm -hmm. You see here. The whole thing is just stain. Uh, so using Allen's APC and a magic sponge, a textured magic sponge. The last thing we want to do is get this on the paint. So alright, working the upper section first, I'll pull it down well and show you the on the side in a second. Gently wiping over the area, this is all this should require. Gets a bit thin there, go on the side as opposed to the flat. Yeah, you can see the underside is pretty bad. So uh, I'll clean it all up and then we can get a trim dressing on here to make it permanent and make it much sharper much darker and much better much more better right clean time 
to now dress. Cleansed and dressed and looking factory fresh. Oh no, this is one of the bits I haven't been looking forward to. The grill. Ow, oh, this is gonna take at least an hour. The scan grip eye match, pretty must have on this. One or two of these little wooden skewers. All definitely has triple. A cut down section of microfiber. So it's a dark, sort of shadowy chrome finish, and if we look, it's just a little stained. It hasn't got the clarity it ought to have. So it means individually polishing all of the slats, but not only, but not only doing this surface, it's a case of doing the underside as well, because once that lower surface is clean, it's gonna reflect the upper surface, which is if, if it's dirty and tarnished and covered in dirt, then it's gonna show on the lower part. Hang on, that's not right. Screw it to one side. Ha. An old school Meguiar's triple action duty detail brush. This side is the side we want. After just two columns, oh yeah, nice. That's just after one row, two rows. So yeah, I'll see you in an hour's time perhaps. That's the one half done with the triple action duty detail brush. And now we're switching to the skewer after all. To get to the, the corner sections where you can't get that. Uh, down the sides and up above, down below, there will be some pretty tiny holes of that device that set of me gonna get into. Uh, dirty polishing towel, gonna switch out to a clean half the buffing. Now good. So hopefully it's clear already, this side untouched, this side, woo, shabow, looking a lot better. So it's a timely process, but it's well worth the effort, apart from, look at him, little bud splat there, one there, and I saw one up here somewhere on the end of this, on the end of this piece. So localize that, and that, give that some more attention to remove the bud splat. And then all we have to worry about is all of that. Thank goodness that is over. Now, I think the same treatment needs to really be done to the Bentley wings. 
front and rear. Paint touch up can go away. Still get a lot of emails about the paint touch ups. Uh, where are they sourced from? My local automotive factor. So tap in Google Fisher Motor Factors Lincoln. I think now to break up the monotony of polish and chrome, we're going to get the wheels on. Episodes ago, there was the vlog giveaway for the Carbon Collective detailing brushes. It was on episode 71, 72, the two AMGs, Mercedes. Uh, Carbon Collective brushes. Paul, congratulations to Paul Masterson. You won. Um, thank you for the email. I have received it. Apologies. It's been perhaps uh, four or five days since I received it and it's not yet in post. You will also, I'll stick in a free Y Details pen for you as well if you look close. There is a little stylus. There is a little stylus on the end of the pen, which is good to know. Oh no! God damn! Sorry, Paul. Sorry, Paul. Ah. I ripped the box. If you eat. Fixed. That's pretty much it then. <clears throat> Just the wheel nut covers to go back on when the wheels are torqued. The wheels will be torqued when the car returns back to earth. Not done a massive amount to the interior on this one, so it's glass inside and out yet to be done. Torque the wheels, auto picker is done, the grills are done, badges, badges need doing. Damn! Alright, the following week I've just realised that there isn't a true ending to this episode. We've seen the L200 Warrior, we've seen the SV Autobiography and then now the Bentley. Here is a Discovery 5, it's a stunning example. Real nice uh, dark, not sure the colour name actually. And then the interior, the interior is quite the combination also. Set up behind me we have Chris from the Interior Revival Company. Chris is just doing some touch-ups and some plastic trim repairs to scuffs and bad textured areas. Once again, I'd like to thank the Rad Company guys for their time. Seeing them on Wednesday night for a bite to eat was fantastic. And their little interview slash tour here on the Thursday morning. And that leads me on nicely to Waxstock, Waxstock 2019. My social media, Instagram, Facebook has been flooded with updates since the event. Today is Thursday, Waxstock was Sunday. And guys, as always, thanks again so much for your support. It's great to see everyone. Terry and I, humbled as always. My Details was invited to be part of the Kamikaze Collection and Ultimate Finish Trade Stands. It was great to see the guys behind the workings there. And then I myself, I have now on stage talking about a bit of the background of Why Details, some sort of the social media presence. Not something I've done before, not something that's normally me. Stand up on stage, get mic'd up and present. Leading up to it, slightly nervous, and I must say, the 20 minutes before the half one stage time, I was getting mic'd up, I was getting sort of prepared and crowds and people just turned up and it was very, I got a bit emotional. But overall, I hope things went well. Again, thank you to the organisers at Waxdot. Without them, none of this show would be possible. So that's it. It's about 35, 36 degrees today. It's a bit of a heat wave here in the UK. Thankfully, I've got a bit on the discovery to do with glass, a final vac and a wipe once Chris has finished his magic. There is a cancellation today and tomorrow I'm meant to have a Carrera T for an enhancement detail. But we've been let down, unfortunately. I happily take that as two days off. However, it's been pretty manic behind the scenes. So finally then, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. And we'll see you again very soon.
Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really, really, really. has got a question, I'm going to come out and stick this thing in your face and then you can ask a question and uh, hopefully we'll get some sort of an answer back again. All right. So, hands in the air. Any questions, Terry? Oh, there must be. Well, we're working on tomorrow. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> fat man running. Here we go. When are you putting my money up? No. <laughs> when we get 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> Any other questions? Here we go. Hi Jim, huge, huge fan from Holland. Thank you. Um, you were talking about 15 odd.